We are a family of six who call the ocean our home. We feel incredibly blessed to be doing this life together as a young family, embracing the ups and downs of what is a life at sea. This is our floating home, Happy Days, and you are invited to follow along as we share this incredible adventure. Have a laugh and be inspired to pursue a life less ordinary. Click the subscribe button to keep up to date as we see where this journey takes us. In the last episode, we build our own solar arch and install anti-siphons on our engines. In this episode, we are continuing to prepare the boat for our Pacific crossing and hit the surf each day between jobs. But an unfortunate event sees us rescuing our poor dinghy and trying to keep the engine alive. Keep watching to see if we can save her. All right. One of the things that's super important in Pacific Ocean preparation is our steering. Uh, on the Leopard 46, they have a rotary drive autopilot, which sits under the sink for those playing at home. And I've got a lovely little tea towel on it because it does sit under the sink. An interesting design concept, but cables that come through are down below. And then the chain, you can see it poking its head up there. And it runs all the way up to the helm or to the wheel. Our chain's pretty good. I've seen some really crusty ones and rusty ones online. Just running through it, checking for cracks and anything else that may need our attention. But we are planning on putting spare chains. This, this inner one, or the one closest to me, is for the autopilot, for the rotary Type 2 Raymarine autopilot. This one here connects to our cables. We plan to put spares on board for both, with the theory being that if we have them, we won't need them. Meanwhile, I'm sweating like a minx because Ted's cooking up a storm. Yep. Horn to tears. 227 in the afternoon it's in Panama. So the right time to do it. Take this one. Can you tie that at all? Uh, Under there. Wait. <laughs> Get out of here, take this too. One, two. Okay, let me unpack a wee bit about what actually occurred this particular day. It wasn't ideal, but it was a really simple takeaway. We had surfed this spot for numerous days in a row and we anchor our dinghy just next to the surf and paddle out and we've done it lots of times. This particular day, the surf was very good and we had eyes for the waves more than we had eyes for securing the tender. So we put her in the right spot, just off in the channel uh, next to the waves, and we tie our anchor line on to the boat with a nice bowline and we're good to go. Well, at least that's the idea. This particular day, it would seem that uh, we were too busy looking at the surf as we were doing the bowline. We won't mention names, will we? No, we won't. Uh, and we went brilliant, anchor's good, let's go surfing, jump in, paddle out. Then about five, 10 minutes later, we see a set roll through and the dinghy is like on the crest of a wave. Bell sees it first, I'm in, I've caught a wave, so I'm ages away, I don't see much of it going on. Bells does, she's paddling her heart out to get to the tender as it's coming into the impact zone. Gets to it as it gets rolled into the surf break with all the surfers, fuel tanks, battery that you could see hanging, uh, sunglasses, all the stuff that's inside a, a, a tender is gone. And we find ourselves in a situation with an upside down dinghy in a surf break. Thankfully, we had some friends there that we were surfing with who anchored well, anchored better than us. And they were able to, uh, yeah, we swam to the dinghy, pushed it out as best we could, attached a, a tow line and 
dragged our upside down dinghy out of the waves until we could flip it. So the takeaway there is do the simple things well, do them consistently, and you won't have a scenario like this. It also needs to be said that we had had a wee bit of experience doing this before. So we knew we needed to act quickly. The sun was setting, it was dark. With any sort of outboard, whether it be four stroke or two stroke, I've got a new appreciation for four strokes, it needs to be said. I thought they were too electrical and if you know you rolled them, they'd be all over, but not the case. This one is going strong. We love it and, and we trust it. Uh, even though it's got some character, it's, it's a goer. With that being said, we knew we needed to act quickly. So we changed all the fluids numerous times, emptied the fuel out of the, both the tank and the engine, oil, spark plugs, coated it with a lubricant called WD-40 numerous times, and just kept working at it until we got it going. And when we did get it going, it ran rough, like really rough, but it was going. And, and with the theory of being, if we can just use it, then it's gonna get that lubrication, that new oil through it and get the salt out. Thankfully, there were some professionals on the island. So uh, within sort of 24 to 48 hours, we had this ex-French Foreign Legion legend help us pull it apart properly. We took it into his workshop. He told some more stories which were just mind blowing and ultimately we stripped it right the way back, cleaned every connection, cleaned every moving part we could get to, put it back together and it's good, good to go. So takeaway there, safety first. <laughs> Tie your anchor on. I'm gonna hurt through. And then it flipped. And then it flipped. I wasn't in it yet. I was holding the handle. Happy days, happy days. This is school bus number 68. This is happy days uh, in the tender. We're actually anchored just out, uh, the, our big boat is anchored just out uh, from your marina. We're, we're in desperate need of a mechanic to try and um, save this engine. So uh, it needs a flush, uh, as you can imagine. At least we got a left home. Silly though. One bowling. And you get a flip dinghy. It's a hard lesson to learn. It's not the first time this dinghy's been over. I'm not suggesting that there's no water in the oil, but the first thing I'm checking is well, there must be because it's uh, it's way over full, right? We just changed the oil maybe two or three days ago and it was below that full line. So we've definitely got oil in there, uh, water in the oil, so we're gonna start by getting rid of that. We've drained the oil, just pulling the spark plugs now. Just goes to show, you never know how things are gonna unfold. <laughs> That change in a matter of seconds. What's to say? Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow, worry about itself. <laughs> Any water? Oh yeah. We're now going for the uh, oil filter with the strap wrench again. I only put this on like less than a week ago, and I did it hand tight. So I thought. All right, on with the new one. Next step is going to be. Uh, putting some fresh oil in there. I'm not sure how many times we're going to have to put oil in, pump it out, put oil in and pump it out. I think I heard only twice, but we'll see. So now we're just measuring out a litre of, liter of oil. Oh, you can see it? That's positive. In with the new oil. New filter in. So we're moving the tender back a wee bit so the engine is in the water enough. Yeah, it is. It's time. It's time to run it. It's just stuck on a piece of rubber. I think, I think they got it. Backfired or something. So what did you just find, Bella? 
Battery was on the fuel line. Oh, let's hope that was it. I got it. It's running. Now I'm just gonna let it run for a wee bit. All right, we're driving it home. We've got it going. There's no engine. We're just taking it easy. We do have a warning light on. We're not sure if that's electrical. They're suggesting it's overheating, but it's not overheating. So I'm hoping that it will dry out. We've got a mechanic tomorrow at 9 o'clock or just after 9 o'clock. So, yeah, all in all, a win. Hooray. Thanks for your help, guys. So, this is the day after. She started every time we've started it. We've been tinkering around town trying to find a mechanic. We can't find one just to give her a good look over. But she's working. So, I'll check the oil again later today and drop it again if we need to. Now we're just going to go and say good day to some mates. Hopefully, it's not home. Okay, we're uh, not quite 24 hours after we were here yesterday when we were upside down. Engine's running, albeit uh, not 100%. It just cut off, cut out on us for no reason as we're heading out here. I think it's an electronic thing of some description. It just like shuts down, uh, but then starts straight away and goes again. So not ideal when you're out in the ocean or in the swell like we are, but we're gonna go and dive for the anchor and hopefully find uh, that and our lock on the bottom of the ocean. You guys could still surf and then paddle in and go to the other side and yeah. I could I could slowly take the boat, the dinghy back round to to there. I'll keep my phone on me, I can always ring a punga or wave a punga down to tow me if I really get stranded. Alright, the recovery mission has begun. Let's go. As you can see it's pretty hard to see. So we're feeling a wee bit like a needle in a haystack. All right. Well done, Rose. That was a tough dive, eh? No luck. Well done, guys. Good effort. I'm absolutely cracking after that. Yeah. Not sure what next. Pregnant and she's trying to cut all her water back from the tap. And it's about to rain. Well, in my limited Spanish, I just worked out she's nine months pregnant. She's carrying, carting all this water across to their home. How often do you think they do it? Well, I think they have to do it nearly every day. I don't know if it's all for her or if it's like if it's her turn to do the run. I'm not sure. The women here are tough. Let's just say, we ran into the men earlier and they're all just chatting on the street and turned us around. <laughs> oh, we snuck in another way. <laughs> Whatever the case, we don't want this being, you know, white tourists helping as a one-off. It's just, um, it's an opportunity. As we were running down this bit of tarmac and I don't think anybody in their right mind seeing a lady nine months pregnant carrying two 20 litre buckets would just be like, oh, that's okay. Uh, you help, don't you? You get in there. Regardless of race or situation. Ah, it does. Um, no, you I mean, have mixed feelings about it, don't you? You want to. Is it condemnation? Is it conviction? No, I think you want to help them, but at the same time, they're pretty happy. Yeah, like, they, they are. They are. Yeah. Well, we think they are. And this is their normal. But now, though it would have been their normal, but now they have that scenario where they are learning about what they don't have. They don't know what they don't know, and then we turn up. Yeah, and they see our phones, they see... That's what I'm not stoked on. They see our wealth, they see our shoes, mm. they see lots of stuff. So what's the takeaway? Um, oh, just, just scrub in and help regardless. And uh, happiness isn't always in possessions. So what are we doing right now, da now Dad? Well, these just landed yesterday. Yeah. We've uh, had our fixed solar panels up for a wee while and they're not wired in. We're starting the process. We're still waiting for the PV wires to go from the actual panels to the MPPTs. They're still in the post, literally. 
So we are uh, going from the batteries to the MPPTs is what we're starting. So we've just ran uh, our wire and we're trying to figure out the best place to put them and what we have to work with because it's not really like we can just go to the store and buy, and them. buy stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what we've been busy doing. It's just sort of like a, um, what would you call it? A test fit of sorts, just to see how everything's gonna go. We'll run the wires and cables and make sure there's enough room to get to the MPPTs. I think there will be. Ooh, but um, for those who are playing at home, well, we're up up above the, what would that be? The, the port aft cabin up in the ceiling. So tomorrow we'll run wires and then we are still waiting on PV wires to turn up. I am aware that in the event of needing to remove this, we're gonna to have to remove those two MPPTs. So that's a bit annoying, but not the end of the world. Let's just hope and believe we don't have to remove that very often. By that point, the wires will, you know, carry the weight of it themselves. Not that you really want to do that, but we'll be able to bring them down. Largely making it up as we go. <laughs> but um, I think it's going to go right. I think it's going to go right. the tinder three days ago we're rewarded with an incredible full moon finish it to ourselves there's a big one coming you need to paddle out <laughs> how would you describe current fishing so beautiful out here look at the full moon behind me and the sun setting on that side I'm not catching waves, just to be floating out here, it's funny. How's Bacchus? <sighs> At this time of the day with a fun swell rolling, one after the other. Just very memorable. And this camera is very close to my face, it's tied around my neck. You're welcome. We did indeed track down a mechanic who performed a full service of our Yamaha four-stroke outboard and she's been running well ever since. Action. Action. Okay. Today, on board Happy Days, with Sailing with Six, we're preparing wires for the MPPT install. Key here is that we've got four wires going from each MPPT charger to our bus bar. And I believe it's important that each wire is the same length. So, currently, we are making sure and preparing all the wires to be the same length. And it's a team yeah. effort. Yep. yep. We don't really have all the right tools, but we're making making do. Don't um, have wire cutters, use a knife. Uh, don't have wire crimpers. Uh, or strippers. Use. And the strippers we have are too small. And we broke them when we tried. Yeah, we did. So, but we fixed them. But we have a bit of elbow grease uh, and many hands, and so we're getting them done. Yep. Yeah. So, instead of using a photo which just ran out, we're using matches. We have lots of matches. Oh, lots yes. Of matches. So, this is a good one. That was a good match. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And Ted has like to rip the ends off. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oop, yes, Matt, you are good. Aren't you very? We're good. Okay, today the PV wires came in, so we are, hooray, wiring up the solar panels. So we're just doing the what I call draft run or initial run of wires to see what it looks and feels like. They're running along here. I'll show you uh, something that Archie helped me with earlier. And we've installed one of these. The idea being we're going to put all eight cables down there and it tightens up to make it waterproof. 
we hope. We've used the old 5200, which we don't often use, but we have in this case, to really stick it in there. And then because it is glass, wood core glass, we've actually made a 5200 cylinder inside it before putting the wires in. So the whole thing is in effect a, a, a waterproof cylinder in case it does leak. I hope it doesn't, but that's the idea. Underneath, it looks like this. There you go, so you can see around the outside there, there's yeah, sealant right the way through. Likewise, we're running them along here. When these uh, clears roll up, they're all hidden away. And we've installed another one here. Same principle, going into this bulkhead, if you like, uh, and into where the MPPTs are. Yes. Woohoo! Last session in Bacchus. Woo! Watch. I'm just about to jump in. I had a meeting in the tender with the team and I'm trying to get some GoPro footage of the kids. So, Before it gets too dark. better get going. Side of the wall looks like so not quite finished coming down i'm going to tidy these wires up coming to the mppt so it's going to look very schmick when we're done and uh bus bars run down this hole down to the never never hello stuff's getting serious i just got dinner sorted and i came down to take a shower what's happening here well it's a, it's a definite uh measure twice cut once. No, the truth is our, our negative cable wasn't quite long enough to make it all the way in. So we're going to do a, a connection to get it from just on the inside here of the wall. Oh. But it's quite high. It is quite high. And Bells is up there like a champ. Do you want um, orange flies or long nose? I have orange flies, yeah. Take your time. As long as you're comfy, take your time. <laughs> your role is very important <laughs> and strategic. <laughs> Got a wide stance. <laughs> Stuff everywhere. I know. And we all put back together, back together, back together before bed. Promise. So last run. We're loading up with all the goodies. Nearly there. Nice. Yes, yeah, so much stuff. It's fresh day. Yes, Friday fresh day. Yep. And see it in there. Oh yum. So this is our official last provision run here in Bacchus. Whilst we don't have far to go, we know that where we're going doesn't have a great deal of options to get stuff. So it's sort of loading up almost like an ocean passage, even though it's just an overnighter. We love just that you can kind of roll in on your dinghy uh, and, and provision. You know, other times it's a, a real mission to get your hands on, on food, but here it's, uh, this is the fruit store right here. Delivered fresh every Tuesday and Friday for your, I don't know, Eating. <laughs> anyway, it's awesome. Nice work. CC. Yeah. Nice work, team. We're off. We're off. Yeah. <laughs> Ted's out there eating his last plantain chips from the yeah. uh, the local plantain shop. Man. And uh, we're just looking at the left-handers peeling through. Goodbye waves. Bye waves. For now. Can you drop me off? You drop me off. <laughs> On this one, uh, it's an upwind passage of sorts, so we're taking a lighter, a lighter wind window. Um, the swell is a bit larger than we would normally take. We're looking at up to two and a half meters of swell. We've decided that we'd rather take the lower wind right. and the bigger swell. Regardless, the wind's going to be on our nose, so we'd rather have less wind. Because the swell doesn't really come off. It doesn't does it? come off a great deal. It, goes it comes a down less to than two meters, but I think it's going to be big. pretty similar. And 
regardless. So uh, the period isn't too bad for this part of the world. It's at nine seconds, eight, nine seconds, um, which is much better than the five seconds that we've experienced uh, for the most part around here. So hoping that we get a wee bit of, you know, a wee bit more time between uh, each piece of swell and that'll certainly help from a comfort perspective. This is one of those ones where you're like, just get it done. Yeah. Get there comfortably, yep. safely, always. Um, and don't break anything. So that's, that's, that's what we're going for. That's our post. <laughs> yeah. It's an overnighter. We'll be there tomorrow uh, afternoon. We've prepped some food. We've prepped as much as we can really. And, and now we've just got to get comfortable um, and get, get some it. miles done. Next time, we get through the uncomfortable passage from Bocas to Shelter Bay and haul out to give Happy Days the bottom job she deserves. I like that you're uh, made, it. <laughs> made it all the way through. <laughs> Safety first. Yes.